Hello everyone, my name is Elle, welcome. I thought that I would do a chatty get ready with me because I haven't done one of those in a while. So I did paint on my brows and some of my base makeup primer, foundation, concealer, just to get it out of the way because I noticed that, let's say this was a foundation brush, if I'm talking and doing my foundation, I'll spend like 20 minutes just like circling blending in foundation for way too long. So I thought that I would just skip that part. It's kind of boring anyway. I want to do a look like this from Manny MUA. He did this purple, orange, white, beautiful eye look and I saw it on Instagram and I've been thinking about it. And the more I think about makeup looks and want to create them, the more I know I just have to go ahead and play. And even if it doesn't turn out like I want it to, it'll still be fun. So I thought that I would chat with you guys about some casual, low key fun stuff. Music, movies, TV, just to keep it light. I had filmed a chatty get ready with me not that long ago and I felt like I was so overwhelmingly negative. Just, I try not to be, but it seems to be my default sometimes and I really don't like that, so. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use the Pastel Goth palette from Kat Von D, and I'm going to use this yellow shade first. But yes, I, I, I felt like I was way too negative. And as I've said, it's something that I sort of fall into, the whole negativity thing, because it's, it's easy. It's honestly easier for me to be negative and think the worst of situations than to think the best. And I don't wanna be that person. I want to think positively, but it's hard sometimes, so I thought that I would, instead of dwelling on some of those negative topics, that I would talk about some fun things. So I do have notes because I'm the worst person if I don't have notes. I get so off track. So let's start with something easy. I know I'll forget things anyway, even though I did try and write down some decent notes. I thought I'd talk about music because music is a big thing for me. I talk about music all the time, but I tend to talk about like the same thing because I have one clear overwhelming favorite. I don't know if you could tell. But I have one overwhelming favorite when it comes to music and I thought that I would mention some other things that I like as well because sometimes I'm having conversations with people and they're like, oh, I like so-and-so. I'm like, I do too. And it's like, really? Because you've never mentioned them before. One of my big favorites I have that is not sleeping back is Billy Joel. If you think I'm a person who likes classic rock music. I am. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that hard to imagine. I'm gonna use the Zulu palette from Juvia's Place. This finally arrived. It was a nightmare getting my hands on this thing. I played with it a little bit and so far I really like it. And the pans are huge. Massive eyeshadow pans. Just ridiculously massive. Um, but yes, Billy Joel. I really love Billy Joel. Billy Joel, one of my absolute favorite songwriters of all time. Um, I decided to add a couple of other records to my wall. Like I have Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks, but then I wanted to add some other things in there because um, I just wanted to be more representative of, of myself. When I had my records before, because I went through a couple phases fixing out my background and stuff, and I had records on my wall before, and I did have some, I think, mostly Jackson Brown, which I do have running on empty up there. But I have uh, Street Life Serenade from Billy Joel back there because I like the album cover. <laughs> I was trying to find stuff that would fit in well, sort of with my background theme and I thought that one would work. I think I have every Billy Joel album though. I couldn't find Cold Spring Harbor, which is my favorite album. And I know I have that one because I tracked it down. It's one of those things that I spent so long looking for. It's his first, studio solo album and it's widely panned but I really love it so much. I tend to love the things that other people don't love. It tends to be what I what I do but um, Cold Spring Harbor is definitely an album I would suggest more people listen to because it has some beautiful songs on there and just some really raw songs on there. Uh, some of my other favorite Billy Joel songs um, Sunset Highland Falls. That was like the opening song or the second song he played when I saw him live a couple of years ago and I just bawled. I just cried my eyes out. I was so surprised he was gonna sing that song and it was so beautiful. I love the lyrics in that song. The thing with 
with my love for Billy Joel is that he's such a lyricist and I just connect to that so much more than I do to other things which is why I keep going back to him. Um, the song James I really love. There's some really good advice in that song. Um, God, there was another song I was just thinking of. Oh, Vienna, which is one of the songs I think most people know, even if they don't really think they like Billy Joel or, or they claim not to like Billy Joel, but everybody I think has seen uh, 13 going on 30 and that song is featured in there. I know so many people who love that song. I also love Jackson Brown, as I briefly mentioned because of the album cover I have back there running on empty, probably his most famous album. But I'm like a deep cut Jackson Brown person. I saw Jackson Brown in concert too um, a few years back and it was so amazing. He's such, he's such a talented musician, but again, like Billy Joel, he's such a songwriter. Some of these, these amazing lyrics that I just, I'm so touched by and so inspired by. One of my favorite Jackson Brown albums, actually, no, my favorite Jackson Brown album is definitely Late for the Sky. And I probably would have put that one there too, but that one is upstairs. I just found it because I had been using it as sort of a backdrop when I was taking some product photos because that's what I do. Um, I love that album. The title song alone, Late for the Sky, the first play I ever wrote. So I have written plays, little short plays. Um, the first play I ever wrote was called Late for the Sky. And I, when I was writing it, I just listened to that album over and over and over again. It was just so inspiring to me. And it still is so inspiring to me because of the imagery and the way that he can combine his poetry, like his lyrics are poetry and, and music together. It's just, it's more than I can possibly express. That's why I love listening to it so much because he says the things that I can't. And he has some really good political songs too. There's a song called Lives in the Balance. It's a song off of one of his albums from the 80s and it is so relevant now. Like change a few little references and it would be like he was talking about America right now. It's unbelievable sometimes and it's kind of sad that things have not changed because he's singing about war and other countries and how the political climate and stuff is in America. So. He has a lot of songs like that, which people didn't really like. And I definitely have moments where I don't want to listen to political songs like that. But sometimes I just, that's all I want to do is listen, listen to political songs like that. Besides those two, I also really love Elton John. I feel like I don't talk about Elton John so much because he's so popular. And sometimes it's hard when you like something that's really popular. Um, because there's always this competition with people. Like I know I'm not the biggest Elton John fan. I will never be because I like other artists and stuff more, but I really do love his music and his words. And I feel like sometimes when I'm talking about it, there's always this competition. Like I'm a bigger fan than you are. And I get that because I definitely act like that sometimes when it comes to Fleetwood Mac. I can be such a snob sometimes. I'm like, yes, man, I know all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, so does a lot of other people though. Um, my favorite Elton John song is Besides Tiny Dancer. Besides Tiny Dancer. I'm going to be talking about my favorite movie in a second, which will make Tiny Dancer make a little bit more sense, besides the fact that it is one of the most popular songs. Um, but I love the song Amarina. I don't know if a lot of people have heard before. I would highly, highly recommend the song Amarina. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful song that just captures my soul. I love Cher a lot which a lot of people kind of guessed, even just from looking at me. I know what I'm about. Okay, I know what I'm about. I love Cher. My first concert that I went to was a Cher concert. One of the most amazing, life-changing moments ever. I will defend Cher forever. She is just one of my absolute favorite people. Tom Petty, the Eagles, Kind of hard to talk about both of those because we lost Tom Petty and we lost Glenn Frey from the Eagles not that long ago and uh, it's it's sort of hard to talk about those things because it's like the realization that some of my favorite musicians and stuff are dying and they don't, they're not that old. There are a lot a lot of artists that I love that I could just I could sit here all night and just list off artists after artists but I'm trying to condense it a little bit. There is an indie group 
uh, that I really love that I wish more people I wish more people knew about them or talked about them. I don't really know, I guess, how popular they are because it's not like I'm deep entrenched in the fandom. It's the band called The Weepies and it's a husband-wife duo and my god. The, their music has been with me through some pretty dark times. You know, some good times but also some dark times and like the song World Spins Madly On is one of the songs that I just, I truly do not know where I would be without that song. You know, there's some songs in my life that I just listen to over and over and over again. And in times of absolute darkness, you can kind of get out of it sometimes if you have the right, the right voice, the right song, the right, the right words. So it's definitely a very personal song to me. But I love just listening to their music in general, but it's very like, folky kind of. I love just listening to their music in general, but it is very folky. Or at least that's sort of how I would kind of classify it, like sort of folk pop. I'm trying to concentrate getting things to blend, but it's a... Uh, I'm totally gonna have to go in with some glitter with this, I think. I can't get this outer corner bit to stay as pigmented as I want it to. Um, but that's sort of the highlights for me when it comes to music. I We'll listen to a lot of random stuff. I've definitely opened up quite a bit and I'll check out what's popular and I get hooked on certain songs. Um, but when it comes to popular artists, I don't listen to a whole lot of them. I'm definitely a Taylor Swift fan. I think it kind of fits in with the other ones if you really sort of think about it. Not so much, I guess, her image now, um, but when she when she started. Um, I, I do like Reputation, that album. Um, I don't listen to it that much right now. I definitely went through a phase where I listened to it a lot. And Kesha's Rainbow. Those are two modern things that I definitely listen to a lot and feel very empowered listening to. I've been listening to some of the suggestions that you guys left me. I've been listening to some of those things, which has been really fun because I like to get a glimpse inside other people's heads and I feel like music's a really good way to do that because music says a lot. Even when people don't realize it, they don't may not realize that their favorite song is saying about them at that moment. You know, it's usually more than just a song. I'll move on now to movies. And honestly, I have pretty basic taste when it comes to movies. Don't get me wrong, I love good cinematography sometimes. I love really good scripts. I love those sort of Oscar nominated movies. It's not like a repeat watch for me. and that tends to make a difference to me whether or not a film is a favorite film or not because I like to be able to watch something over and over and over again and sometimes certain things just don't stick with me like others. Now my absolute favorite movie of all time is an Oscar winner. It's almost famous. Honestly this look is turning out to be such a hot mess but I don't even because I'm having so much fun talking with you guys. I'll fix it with lashes and glitter. Um, but Almost Famous is my favorite movie. Favorite movie of all time. Um, for those of you who may not know, I have a son. His name is William. He's two and a little bit. And he was 100% named because of William from Almost Famous. 100%. I always knew if I ever had a boy, I would name him William because of that movie, because of that character. So there you go. That's how much I love that movie. Um, I've seen it more times than I could possibly count, honestly. Uh, I probably know the entire script by heart. I love the soundtrack. It's very music based, of course. For those of you who don't know about the movie and what it's about, it's about a young boy, William, who follows a fictional band across the US on tour to interview them. And it's got sort of like a, a tiny bit of a mockumentary feel, but it's not, it's not set up that way. But you really get like the sort of life of the rock star and the, the young, the young boy sort of experiencing life for the, the first time outside of the reach of his protective or overprotective mother. It's set in the early 70s, so it's got, hits all those notes for me, all of the things that I really love. All the things that I really love about 
about everything um because i'm kind of kind of a little bit stuck in the 70s <laughs> and it has kate hudson in it who i love so overall it's just a huge huge win-win for me that's a movie that i could definitely just i could go for watching that right now actually i would love to go watch almost famous i have this glitter in front of me grind i'm gonna see if i can save this i'm gonna stick with it now but i might see if i can find a different glitter i'm so awkward when i do videos like this it's like i forget what i'm doing entirely i'm just like how do i put makeup on my face i cannot recall my list of favorite movies is actually quite small um i'm not really that big of a movie watcher. I'm definitely more of a TV person. Um, but I also really love, you're all gonna judge me, Burlesque. Yes, the movie with Christina Aguilera and Cher. I love Christina Aguilera. I don't even care, fight me. I love her and I love that movie because it has all those good things. It has like the underdog story, which I'm a sucker for. It has music, it has dance, it has Stanley Tucci and Cher. What else does a person need in a movie? I'll wait and think about that for a moment, but for me that's really all I need. Why won't you blend? I'm so mad at this. It won't blend. I had high hopes for this. This was like it seemed like it was gonna work. And now it's just not. It's not not blending for me at all. Anyway, um I also really, really love the Devil Wears Prada. It's totally because of Stanley Tucci, but also because Meryl Streep. And actually, I love Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway too. It's just all around really good cast. And I love the plot again. You sort of have the underdog story there, it tends to be a theme with me. I love fashion and makeup. And there was a point in my life where I thought that I would work at a magazine. I didn't realize it was like that difficult. You kind of get this idea sometimes growing up reading magazines and you think it's going to be easy, but like as a Canadian who lives in a very small, small part of Canada, there's no magazines here. I don't think there's really very many major magazines in Canada in general, like fashion magazines. There's like one I can think of. And it's L. And to be a Canadian and trying to like move to the US for a profession, there's so many hoops you have to jump through and so many things that it's just like most companies and stuff will not will not waste their time because you basically have to prove that you are more qualified than an American to get the American job so that's it for movies that I can think of right now I'm sure once I'm editing this I'll be like oh yeah I forgot all about this one okay so from far away I was looking at it super up close and from far away it doesn't look bad it doesn't look as blended as I wanted it to look but it doesn't look bad I need some other glitter though that was almost traumatizing. I did not know what happened to Midnight Cowboy because that's definitely what I need here, some gold. I've been using this Natasha Denona highlighter um, as a mirror because I really like the size of the mirror. But I'm going to show you guys some pan porn. I love this highlighter, if you can tell. That's right. Half fake's going to come and make everything better. One eye always looks better than the other. I'm honestly too obsessed with that trick of the glitter liner because it's so easy and then it makes everything look so much better. Lashes. Legit forgot to put mascara on. Oh well. I'll have to add mascara. Not like these lashes aren't beat up as it is. Okay, see now with the glitter I'm like, yes. Okay. Anyway. Uh, what was I talking about? TV shows. Let's talk about that. I'm such a TV junkie and I love so many things, but I'm definitely just gonna talk about my favorite ones. Number one, hands down, favorite show, Gilmore Girls. I'm rewatching it again for like the 10,000th time, perhaps. That might be a little bit of an. Sorry about that. I needed to lash really quickly because I realized the lash glue was going to dry, so I'll have to add mascara. I'll add a little bit of black liner to connect in and then I'll mascara and that should take away some of the weirdness but I'm gonna wait till everything fully dries before I try and tackle that because otherwise I'll end up moving the uh, moving the lashes all around so 
we'll deal with it looking a little weird for a moment. I'm going to use the um, Anastasia Aurora Glow Kit for some glow. Maybe this. Ooh, no. Something bright orangey, maybe. Orange and purple. Do a gradient of highlighters. I hate that there's no mirror in here. That's like the one downside with these glow kits. No mirror. So sad. Um, Gilmore Girls, as I was saying, as I got interrupted by my lashes. Favorite show. Watching it again. I'm on episode 15 or something of season one when it's nighttime and I'm too tired to do much of anything but I can't get my mind to shut off. I watch Netflix and I love that Gilmore Girls is on Netflix. Not super crazy about the reboot. Definitely did not watch that very much. It took a long time for me to get back into watching the show after the reboot because I'm glad we got more Gilmore basically. I like that we got a little hint into the life a little Parts of it I did not care for, but I'm not going about that in case you have not seen it yet and you would like to. I do not like to spoil it for you. Besides Gilmore Girls, I love Roseanne. I wish, I should have dug it out. I have a display upstairs of all the seasons, the box sets of Roseanne, because I have all of them. I cannot get over that show. I've watched it so many times and they're bringing it back. And I cried when they announced it. I'll cry when I watch it. It's like I cried when I watched Will and Grace when they brought that back. Like I cried the first time. I, like the new, the new season, the first episode, I cried. Full on ball, ugly tears, just cried. Cause I love that show. That's also one of my favorite shows that I've watched over and over and over and over again. So many times I just, it was such a big part of my life. Like Roseanne was definitely a huge part of my life. Gilmore Girls was a part of my life when I was younger. Roseanne was a big part of my life and I'm so excited for the new season. So excited, so excited, so excited. I can't even put it into words how excited I am for a new Roseanne because it's definitely one of the best shows of all time. And little known fact, the, hold on, before I get back, I'll get back to you on the fact. All right, I am back. I mascaraed and added black liner there, so. We're looking better. We're looking a little bit more put together now. I use my Anastasia little blush kit. I bought this from the sales section. One of the best things I ever purchased. Anyway, back to Roseanne, my little known fact. It's actually more of like a six degrees of separation kind of thing. Um, Amy Sherman Palladino, the creator of Gilmore Girls, actually got her big break on Roseanne and she was part of the creative team. And I just love that. Basically, you can really see parallels between Jess from Gilmore Girls and Mark from Roseanne. Like there's strong parallels there. And she was partially responsible for creating Mark and obviously she created Jess. So speaking of Jess, This Is Us. Where did that show come from? So good. It's so cheesy sometimes, but I love it. I can definitely make connections to everything. It's a special skill. I swear I could make a connection to Roseanne, to your favorite TV show in less than six people. Probably three. I could probably do it in three. One of my favorite things to do has always been six degrees of separation. Like, who is that person that connects you to somebody else? I love that movie. I love that play. Stalker Channing was a huge obsession of mine through high school, and I think I watched her entire filmography. But one of the standards for me definitely has to be six degrees of separation, which is this amazing film. Highly recommend. Um, do not talk and apply lip liner. But Stockard Channing's in it. Actually, Kelly Bishop, Emily from Gilmore Girls, is in it because she played that character on Broadway, the one that Stockard Channing played in the movie. Wow, I am full fandoming out now. I haven't been in touch with this part of myself in a while, and it feels kind of weird, but also amazing. Anyway, Will Smith is also in that movie, and Donald Sutherland. I was gonna say, from the Hunger Games. Why is that what I think of? Poor Donald Sutherland. Anyway, yes. So besides Gilmore Girls and Roseanne and Will and Grace, I really love Grey's Anatomy. I love Grey's Anatomy and I don't care. That's a hill I'll die on. I love Grey's Anatomy. Uh, some of the characters, some of the quotes, some of the, the inspirational things, like it's super cheesy like This Is Us sometimes, but I love it, love it. I really like this lip gloss, this is YSL. Why so? Ooh. Yep, some sort of plumping lip gloss, but I like it. 
I think this worked. I think this is a pretty fun look. I like this now. I feel like I should be doing something with this look on instead of just... I was gonna introduce wigs. Maybe I can do that. They're sitting behind me in case you saw them. You might have been wondering like what those things are. Two new wigs. Maybe I'll just introduce them to you quickly now at the end and then officially call us done. I don't know what wig, if either of them, will work with this particular look. And I wear wigs because they're fun, but also because I have hair and scalp issues right now. So wigs are kind of a saving grace for me. As much as people might criticize it, as much as people might criticize my headbands, honestly, if I didn't wear them, I'd get criticism for the other things. People would be like, why is your scalp flaking? Why is your hair like that? Why don't you do other things with your hair over and over again? You can't win, you can't win. All right, so I'll show the blonde wig first. This is gonna look probably not the greatest on me, but I'm excited to try something different. I'm not comfortable showing this part of my scalp on camera. So I'm gonna put the wig on and then I'll show you. Okay, so this is just sort of a quick throw on of the wig. It's definitely not like style or anything. I didn't put a headband on. I'm just wearing the wig to sort of test it out. This is not me at all. I feel very different, very strange, but I like, I like different. I could probably never pull off being a blonde for real. It definitely makes me want to do my makeup in a different way. But I like this. I feel like this kind of thing works. Like if I was to be like Instagram model, I feel like I would suddenly be very popular. I feel like I could do the popular like Instagram thing with this wig all of a sudden. Isn't that amazing? The power of wigs. So I might throw this on it for some videos and I feel like I need to be wearing some very vibrant bright colors in order to work. A lot of my wardrobe is very neutral, so I feel like I need some brighter pops of color. I feel like really rich colors would work really well and balance the, the wig. Part of me wants to be very super glam with it, and part of me wants to be like super like California flowers in my hair. I can't decide what personality this wig is giving me. I definitely have like certain personalities for my wigs. I'll have to figure out what this one is. And this is my other wig, which I need to style as well. This is like me circa 2004 right now. It's giving me strong, strong flashback vibes. I also feel a little bit like I could be Joan Jett and also a little bit like Anne Wilson from Mars. I kind of love this maybe more than I should love this. I feel like there's going to be so many different ways to style this, these bangs and I'm excited to have different things to play with. But honestly, this makes me just want to rock like a really deep, red lipstick or just a really bright bold lipstick in general and I I don't mind this because this is very comfortable to me this is like exactly who I was for a very long period of time very 2004 I feel like if I had Evanescence playing in the background right now I would be transported back through time you can see how different how different the wigs are and, and the effect that they have and how I just look like a different person but this is actually really fun and I want to do full like rock with this, but I also want to do full like Amy Lee from Evanescence with this as well. I don't even think she had bangs, but it's just because I did and I always wanted to look like her. Anyway, enough rambling. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I had a lot of fun doing this. I had a lot of fun creating this look. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Why did I say that? I feel like that's a personality that goes with a long wig. Okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And anyway, thank you guys. Whoa. It's gonna take a while to get used to bangs again. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I really truly appreciate it. It's so much fun talking to you guys and getting to know you guys a little better. Sorry if I've been the worst at responding to comments. I am the kind of person that jumps all over the place. I never go in order. So if I missed your comment, I'm so sorry. I try to respond to questions as soon as I possibly can, but I read everything even if I don't get a chance to respond because sometimes I read comments on my phone and I'm the worst at responding on my phone because I always am afraid I'm gonna respond to the wrong person. And if you want to share some of your favorite music, movies, or TV shows with me, I would love to hear it. Anyway, thank you so much once again. I'm sorry for being so repetitive, but I am really, really grateful, and I hope we get a chance to talk soon. Bye for now.